Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Good day everyone. Welcome to Fusion Mobile e-learning clinic. I'm Miss Lydia Idowu and we'll be talking about production, division of labor, specialization and exchange under commerce. Do we all get that? Now we'll be running through all those topics together. The first one is production. Under production, we're going to talk about the definition of production, the classification, the factors of production, which are land, labor, capital, entrepreneur. Then we'll be talking about the division of labor. Under it, we have the definition, the advantages and disadvantages. And we'll also be looking at specialization, the definition, the types, exchange, the definition of exchange and types of exchange. Now, let's talk about production. Now, when you hear the word production, what comes to your mind? All these four out outlines I have on the board has to do with production. Now, when we're talking about production, we are talking about transformation of raw materials. When we're talking about production, we're talking about creating of goods and services. When talking about production, we're talking about how to satisfy human wants and how the goods and services we produce get to the final consumers. So now, what is production? Production can be said to be the transformation of raw materials and creation of goods and services to satisfy human wants. And remember I said it earlier that commerce is not complete until the goods and services get to the final consumers. Now, transformation of raw materials into finished goods. How do we get raw materials? Remember the, the last topic we treated, we talked about extraction. Extraction is like, uh, it has to do with activities of extracting raw materials from the soil. So that's how we get the raw materials we use in producing anything. So the creation of goods and services has to do with after getting those raw materials from the soil, then we'll, they, they go through some processes. And after those processes, they, we, we, um, they come, what, what the result of those processes are the goods that are being produced. Now, these goods and services have, has to, or have to meet the the consumer we have to satisfy our consumers so that's that about production production has to do with the transformation of raw materials into finished goods it has to do with the creation of goods and services it has to satisfy human wants and production is not complete until it gets to the final consumers now we're going to talk about the classification of production and here it is on the board Production is classified into two. We have the direct production, we have the indirect production, and under the indirect production, we have family production, primary production, sorry, excuse me. We have the secondary production, and we have the tertiary production. Now, what is a direct production? A direct production is like a subsistence production, like we talked about in the previous topic. It is an individual production of goods and services for family consumption. For example, a man produces corn, and after harvesting the corn, he, 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 he brings it home for his family, for the consumption of, of his family. He didn't harvest the corn to sell to the general public. He harvested them for the use of his family. So that is what direct production is about. Direct production is about producing goods and services for your personal consumption now talking about the indirect production indirect production has to do with large scale it has to do with the modern equipment it has to do with sales and exchange of money for goods now indirect production is the production of goods and services for the general public it has to do with producing goods and services in large scale, in large quantities. And it has to do with modern equipment. That is when labor comes in. Um, that is when labor comes in. Because if, 
For example, the direct production, you don't need a lot of labor. You can just look for just one or two of your family members to harvest whatever you, your, 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 your harvesting. But the indirect production, you need so many helping ends. Okay, you need skilled workers to help you in producing the goods. And for indirect production, there is exchange of money for goods. After producing, since you're selling to the general public, you sell to them and you get in, in, in return, you get money in return. Now, under the indirect production, we have the primary production, we have secondary production, and we have the tertiary production. Now, if you remember the, the definition of production, we said production is the transformation of raw materials into finished goods and making it available to the final consumers. So, yeah, the primary production is about the extraction of raw materials from the soil. Primary production is about extraction of raw materials from the soil. For example, if I want to make um, cloth, I'll have to get cotton from the soil in order for me to make cloth. So that is what primary production is about. Now, talking about the secondary production. Now, secondary production has to do with the transformation of those goods you extracted from the soil. Transform, you, you have to transform them into what? Into finished goods. That is what secondary production is about. Now, tertiary production has to do with the primary production and the secondary production. Now, goods produced at this level or at this stage, at the primary production, extracting of raw materials from the soil, and the secondary production, transforming of those raw materials you extracted from the soil into finished goods, and then bringing it to the final consumers. That is what the tertiary production is about. The goods you produced, at the, uh, the, you extracted at the primary level, the transformation of raw materials at the second level, then you bring them together as a finished goods and you take them to those who are in need of it. Who are the people in need of it? The people who are in need of it are called the consumers. So that is that about the classification of production. So we're going to move to the factors of production. The factors of productions are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. We're going to be talking about the factors of production. On we, I said they had land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. Now we'll be looking at the definition of land. Now, land is the surface of the earth on which plants grow on which raw materials are extracted, from which raw materials are extracted. We build um, industries on the land, people work on the land, and we get our raw materials from the land as well. And land is also a free gift of nature. It is not as if anybody brought land from heaven. We met it here on earth. Now, for every factor of production, there is always a reward. And the reward for land is rent, in the sense that if I have land and someone is in need of that land, if I sell out the land or rent out the land to the person, the reward I'm getting, I'll get a reward back in return. Now, the characteristics of land is one, land is immobile, immobile, you can't move it, it is, if you have a land here, if you come back in the next 20 years, the land will still be there. It is unmovable. The second one is the supply of land is fixed. Land is a free gift of nature, like I said earlier. It's a free gift of nature. It's not like anybody brought land from heaven. We all met it here. And land has no cost of production. You don't have to start looking for money to produce a land. It has no cost of production. And also the reward for land is rent. Now, still under the factors of production, we have labor. Now, definition of labor, we have all forms of human effort. We have man's mental and physical effort. We have towards production, and we have the reward for labor, which is salaries and wages. Now, how do we put all this together? Now, you can say labor can be defined as all forms of human effort, both physical and mental efforts directed towards production. Now for production to take place, 
you can't production can't be completed without labor because we have people coming together to do to carry out some works or to carry out some efforts in order for a for goods to be produced now we have all forms of human efforts we have the man's mental effort it has to do with the mental effort how you think and all that it has to do with physical effort for example carrying of things working physically and all this effort is directed towards something which is production of a particular goods or service now the reward of labor is salaries and wages like we know the reward for land is rent after labor after you employ people to work for you you can't just tell them and at the end of the day thank you and just allow them to go there is always a reward for labor and that reward is what salaries and wages now we have the types of labor we have just two types of labor we have the unskilled labor and we have the skilled labor now who are the unskilled laborers now the unskilled labor have no formal education they have they can have little education but not a formal education they make no use of their mental efforts they make use they are the ones who make use of the physical efforts talking about the physical effort it has to do with um, for example let me say the bricklayers you see them they walk carrying blocks building houses and all that i'm talking about um, those who work under the engineers you see them working physically with their muscles and all of that now the reward for unskilled labor like earlier when i said the reward for labor is salaries and wages now the reward for unskilled labor is not salary it is wages now wages is a kind of is money being paid daily at the end of every job at the end of every job for example a bricklayer goes home with something unlike the skilled labor now let's talk about the skilled labor the skilled labor has to do with the mental effort the mental effort has to do with the training they've gotten in higher, the higher institutions and all that for example examples of the skilled laborers are the accountants the lawyers the doctors they categorize them as the the white collar job and the reward for skilled labor is salary salary is the money they get at the end of every month so now we'll be talking about the third aspect of factor of production which is capital we'll be looking at capital we have the definition on the board we have the characteristics of capital now under the definition we have the man-made assets capital is a man-made asset used to produce goods for example we have um for every business if you want to start up any business you have to have a capital now that capital can be in form of an asset the physical asset or it can be in form of the liquid asset which is cash some of the examples of the physical assets are land building plant and machineries and so on and so forth and the liquid asset has to do with money that that is cash now it is also wealth used to create future wealth now capital for example money is like wealth on its own if you use the money if you invest your money wisely into a business you can use it to create more money that is more wealth for future use now the characteristics of capital the first one is capital is man-made it is not like we are extracted we extracted it from raw materials and all that it is man-made we get capital money from people we get assets people build houses by themselves so capital is man-made now capital is durable in other words it lasts long capital exists in different forms like i said earlier capital exists in the physical form the physical form is the building the land the plant property and equipment the machinery and all that and the liquid form of capital is the cash that is money now capital is also is subject to depreciation now the depreciation is said to be the reduction in value of fixed assets now when we're talking about depreciation we're talking about the physical aspects of capital 
the motor vehicle it depreciates in value the plants property and equipment machinery and all that now capital also promotes the vision of labor it promotes the vision of labor in the sense that if you have more capital you'll be able to employ more people to work for you so capital also promotes the vision of labor now let's look at the last aspect of the factors of production we have the entrepreneur now who is an entrepreneur an entrepreneur is said to be one or someone who starts a business alone he or she starts a business on his or her own now an entrepreneur coordinates all other factors of production this is it an entrepreneur coordinates and organizes all other factors of production um, the land labor and capital now the third aspect an entrepreneur bears and takes all the weeks alone remember i said an entrepreneur is one who starts a business alone so all the weeks and decisions of the business is taken by him now the reward for an entrepreneur of course everybody goes into business to make nothing but profit now so that's that about the definition of an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur starts business alone an entrepreneur coordinates and organizes all other factors of production the land labor and the capital then an entrepreneur bears all the weeks of the business alone and makes decision on his own then the reward for an entrepreneur is what profits we have the characteristics of an entrepreneur the first one is Rick Spira like I said earlier he takes all the weeks of the business by himself if he makes profits he, he, he shares the profits with, with nobody and if he bears if, if he makes a loss he bears that alone an entrepreneur organizes all other factors of production the land the labor and the capital an entrepreneur gets the land by himself he gets capital by himself and he gets people to work for him by himself it's not as if he has to consult anybody before he does anything in his business he do everything he does everything on his own sorry now the third one is decision making now an entrepreneur takes decision on his own whether to go to buy a land in Aja or to get a land in Mushi, it is an entrepreneur that decides that. And an entrepreneur makes decision on what kind of business to go into. He makes decision whether to go into production or manufacturing of goods. It makes it takes all the decision on its own. So that is that about production and factors of production. Let me let's quickly go through all those definition of production the classification of production the factors of production which i just explained now like i said earlier the production is the transformation of raw materials into finished goods and making it available for the final consumers and the classification of production we have the direct production and indirect production and the factors of production are land labor capital and entrepreneur the reward for land is rents the reward for labor is salaries and wages and the reward for an entrepreneur is what profits now some questions will, will be displayed on the screen in order for you to evaluate yourself